Mesut Ozil takes the plaudits, but how much credit did Unai Emery take? Yeah. Left him out of the team, said publicly he's got to work harder. Yeah. Is he reaping his rewards? At the moment he is. I think it's the first time in Mesut Ozil's Arsenal career he's been challenged. He's been challenged to perform at the level that, that Unai Emery expects. And I think in, in the last few years of Arsene Wenger's reign and the, the quality of manager is not in doubt in terms of Arsene Wenger, but there seemed to be a comfort zone at Arsenal. There seemed to be players not performing at an intensity and a level. And I remember we spoke after they lost the first two games. I said I saw a clear difference in the way they played the game in terms of their intensity, in terms of their run, in terms of their defensive organisation. they still got a long way to go mm. because Leicester could have been three goals up, two set pieces, and Didi hits the bar of a header. Harry mm. Maguire gets a free header eight yards out, should score. They still have things that, in their makeup, that don't, for me, make them title contenders yet. But he's had a fantastic start, and all credit to him because after two games, he had a lot of detractors. When uh, when I saw a lot of good in their play, for sure. How would you manage Mesut Ozil? I try and keep him happy. <laughs> you got to whip him now and again, you know. But I think he's professional enough to understand that. I think sometimes his body language gives a lot away. You know, he looks like he's a little bit sulky and. And stuff like that. But when you see him play like he did last night, you know, he's a class apart. Mm. And he's a beautiful footballer. Oh, incredible. And he's a, you know, he's got a touch of genius about him as well. Mm. And um, there's, those performances have been few and far between from yeah. over the last couple of seasons. But we're talking about a guy who played for Real Madrid, we're talking about a guy who's won the World Cup. Exactly. So he's got the pedigree. Right. Well, since he's been in the Premier League, He's had more assists yeah. mm. than anybody yeah. else. 52. Mm. Yeah, incredible. He's, uh, the, the, and, th and this is uh, sometimes when he's been criticised and said he's not contributing. Yeah. But I think that's part of it because he is such a good player. People look to him to, to perform at that level. And, and I think he'd be the first to admit in the, maybe the last 18 months, yeah, he hasn't got to the levels that's expected of him. He, he's had problems with the German national team. He's now quit the German national team. But for me, even in those three goals, there's a difference in the speed and the tempo of their play now, in the intensity of the, in the tempo of the ball movement that they I remember playing against Arsenal last year. They'd get around the box, make 10, 15 passes and look for eye of the needle stuff. But that stuff there was eye of the needle stuff, but it was done at a high, high speed and high tempo. And that comes because without the ball, they're more intense. Without the ball, they're pressing the ball. So, so all of a sudden, the tempo of their ball movement is raised. So those goals were outstanding and people saying it's old Arsenal. But I'm seeing a completely different Arsenal in the actual tempo intensity they're playing the game at. Last one on Ozil. Uh, I'll try and paraphrase this because it's a long, long tweet. Way. It basically says, uh, Wenger played an unfit Ozil in the wrong position. He has to play in the hole every week and he has to have movement in front of him. Yeah, well, that's just stating the obvious, isn't it? You know, <laughs> I, I, that's all right, then. He, is, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he should be managing Arsenal. He just simplified the game yeah, so yeah. comfortably. Yeah, I agree. I think number 10 is his best position. Uh, I think Lacazette's in good form. But His link-up play last night was yeah. very, very good. You know, and then you've got Aubameyang coming on and he gives you that injection of pace. But, do you know what's important? Sorry to, to interrupt, no, go but ahead. what is important for a number 10 in any team is what you do without the ball. And I see a difference in what he does in terms of his work without out of possession. Because Unai Emery, I spoke to Bruno at Brighton, he worked with Matt Maria, and he makes sure his players are fit, he makes sure his players are organised, he makes sure they press at intensity. And when Ozil wasn't doing it at the start of the season, what happened? He took him out of the team. He took him out of the team. So, for me, all of the good that's happened in Arsenal in terms of their attacking play stems from the defensive play is much better. I get that, but I think over, you know, previous years, Ozil covered a lot of ground in games that went unnoticed. You know, and you think, oh, I Was that because it wasn't meaningful? Was he just sort of jogging around? Maybe. No, but but you, don't, you don't see it. Sometimes people see what they want to see as well, Jeff. But if he's providing that many assists... Yeah, he's is a he, hell of a player. Is he, is he got to be tracking back and doing all the dog I work? Think, I don't think you can get away. You look at Man City, <laughs> 1 to 11, all of them. All of them work. You can't get away with it now. If you want to be a top team, every single player needs, needs to be part of a process with and without the ball. I think those days have gone when you can be a number 10, walk around the pitch and, and wait and, and then and take off when you want to. You, you see, people speak about Messi as if he does that. And yeah, he, he, the stats in terms of overall distance he covers is low, but in terms of his high intensity distance, the meaningful stuff, he's right up there. I played with a lot of number 10 like that. Yeah, <laughs> My career would have been a lot longer if it had been modern day. You can't get away with it now. You can't. It's a different game. Different right, game. Right, let's have a quick look at the championship table because there's another belting night. Uh, and this this season, I mean, you can't throw a hanky over the top it's right now. Unbelievable. I mean, I think Sheffield United could have gone top tonight, yeah. couldn't they? Uh, they didn't take their chance. Uh, a late equaliser from Joe Allen at Stoke. Borough, okay. still top. Yeah. Just a goal difference. It's, it's a great West Brom play tomorrow. And first taste of defeat for Dean Smith and John Terry. Yeah. 
to Norwich, but what a run Norwich are on right mm. now. Norwich, Daniel Frark has done incredible, and they've got a young team there, a really young team. He, he's really bought into to Norwich's academy. They've got four or five outstanding young players playing a really expansive style of football. But I look at all of those teams, you, like you say, you could throw a blanket over them. There's not one team with that magic average of, of two points a game, and that just shows how difficult that league is to win consistently week in, week out. It's such a difficult league to call, and it's, I think it's going to go all the way this year. I think that in the end there could be five, six teams with a chance of all, automatic I'm just looking at West Brom there, just hovering there, hovering. you know, with the game in hand. Uh, and yeah. what they have is a goal scorer. Goals. You look at their goal difference, they've got the best goal difference. Yeah, they've got Rodriguez, they've got Dwight Gale, yeah. and normally, you know, you over the, score they goals. make the difference. Yeah, for sure. You know, the goal scorers. I remember Burnley going up a few years ago with... Uh, Folks and Ings and, Gray. and, yeah. and Gray, you know, yeah, players like Gray, that, yeah. you know. They do make the so difference. A huge difference. So they'd be a wee dark horse for me, or a big dark horse. I'm going, I'm going no how. I'm going Tony Pulis. Tony I know it's Pulis, easy to say when they're well, sat at the top. It's, it's not, it's a good shirt. Who have been outstanding good in, in, in watching them, and I think he deserves more more credit is Chris Wilder at Sheffield United. Yeah. The way yep. that they're playing football, it, job. he is playing football that I've seen it's centre halves that are overlapping wing backs. He's got players <laughs> playing up from the back. He's absolutely fantastic to watch, so entertaining. And for him, fantastic job at Northampton. We want to see more managers from Marshalls reach the top level where he's totally got all the capabilities that. to do that. I mean, also as well, <laughs> you've only got to look further down. Steve McLaren at QPR, two great results. Yeah, two What's great he done? Results. They had a horrendous start to the season. He did. Two well, strikers. Again, we, we talk about sort of instant gratification in football. Obviously, yeah. Steve needed a bit of time. Yeah. And, look, they're not out of the woods yet by any means, I'm sure, and he'll know that, but it looks like he's enjoying himself yeah. as well. And he's getting back to doing what he likes to do, and that's yeah. coach young players on the, yeah. on the training ground. And QPR, all of a sudden, are reaping the benefit of that. But it's still a long season. Yeah. But I'm sure he's enjoying the... Enjoying the wins. He told me that when he was at Derby. How and he beat me that day. He said, Enjoy the wins while he can. I said, Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Do that help? <laughs> yeah, it's good advice. <laughs> is it wrong to describe the Championship as a slog? Because there is so much of it. There's a lot of quality in the Championship, but it is a slog. You've got 46 games Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. It's so difficult. You know, we, we, I experienced it with Brian and Hull, like, fortunate enough to get promoted. And you do need a physical side to you if you're going to get out of the league. And I think Leeds started off great. They start, mm. They've conceded a lot of goals from set plays. Mm. You have to get the basics right in the Championship as well. Well, you know, you touched on Middlesbrough. I thought they were really impressive against yeah. Sheffield Wednesday. They looked a big, strong team. Yeah. Compact. They knew what they were doing. Great manager, legendary yeah. manager, actually. Yeah. So you'd imagine they'll be there, there, but definitely. But 46 games. I mean, in the top flight in Scotland or in the top flight in England, we play 38 games. Yeah. So it's an extra eight on top. Eight That's almost a quarter of the season. Maybe. Yeah, it is. So it is a big ask for those players. And then you might make the playoffs. Yeah. And you're looking at another three or four games after that. Have we talked leagues earlier? Here's an interesting question. The best league and the hardest league in Europe is the Championship. I wouldn't disagree with that. <laughs> I would not disagree. See if you're a punter. The championship, you wouldn't touch it. No, don't go near you it. Wouldn't touch don't it. Don't go near it. If form goes out the window. Yeah. You know, teams get on a good run. There yeah. might be a team that we don't see in the bottom half of this table can end up getting promoted. Right. Definitely. Look at Fulham. Fulham last year. Fulham. There's, there's always one that comes point. with a late yeah. run, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, absolutely. And there's always a late fall. And they get a bit of well. momentum. Mm. Absolutely, yeah, they get a bit of momentum. So it's fascinating watching. Yeah. The other thing that seems to me as well, in the championship, when you hit form. Yeah. More than any other league, you can keep it going. Well, do you know what it is? It's that Saturday, Tuesday thing as well. You know, you, you, you come off a win on Saturday, you've got another game on Tuesday, you win that and it just seems to roll off. And that's what happened for us at Brighton. We just felt the more games that came in a short space of time, the better, because we were on form, you have confidence, so it can work that way as well. I think momentum's key in a championship. And also, who has the least injuries? Who, who looks after their players the best? Because it's, it's not about so much training ground stuff, but rest, rest. recovery yeah. and being good professionals that get you to where you want to be. Can you afford to even think about not just trying to go up, but also being ready to go up as well? Or have you just got to get out of it? Get out of it. I Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and then you can build from there. Get it, getting out of it, I think that's the, the icebreaker. And everybody goes... Whew. Yeah. I, it I, changes I, everything. I, it changed my career. Yeah, it's the best. Would you, fancy, the best again, would you fancy managing the championship yeah, at some point in the future? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I learnt a lot, even in a difficult period of Bolton. It was still an experience, whether it be a good one or a bad one. I feel more rounded for the experience of yeah. that. But as a player, when I got promoted by Leicester, it changed my changed life completely. Life. It does. It completely. does. And changed Martin O'Neill's career as well. Because yeah. he just went like that, the confidence. And then all of a sudden, remember the big boys and you test yourself against the best. Can you stay up? Mm. And we did it for four or five years and never looked back, really. Yeah. And some clubs will do that, Bournemouth. You know, yeah, but Bournemouth are doing a great thing. What I, I would say, it, it's getting closer. The top of the championship, the bottom of the Premier League. You, the three clubs that went up last year all stayed up. Uh -huh. and, but the thing that they had 
they had a clear way of playing and kept all three kept their managers. So mm. once you do get up, it's now more realistic that you actually have a chance to stay up. Whereas I think the gap was a lot bigger maybe five, six years ago.